In this video, I will show you how to create an AI Imangaji animation and we haven't done one in a while. So I thought it was a great idea to do one again. And this one is from the latest video of Imangaji. It also has some new style elements in it and I'm really excited to explain it. But before I do, if you want to become a pro editor and want to earn two to 5K a month as an editor, then do join the Social Creator Club Pro. In this masterclass, I will show you where to find clients and how to get them in. And I even have an interview with the editor of Imangaji himself. There's literally 40 hours of content and also Q&A calls and even potential clients. Link is in the description, so do join that and then let's jump into it. So looking at the animation, as you can see, we have this AI image. It even moves and there's some rain. I think it's a really cool composition. I also love the colors. And then we have this line animation. We have this text animation with these gear icons in the background and also these tiny circles that pop up. Here we have a couple more text animations and that's it. So let's start with the image. I generated an image in Midjourney, but you can use any AI tool for this. You can also use Leonardo or Firefly. And basically the prompt I used is cinematic image of a soccer player standing in a stadium. And then this last part is the aspect ratio 16 by nine. And it generated these four images and I like the top left one the most because it's a bit more centered and I just like the composition a bit better. So I chose U1 to get this version. And then I'm going to just copy it, right click, copy image. And then let's go to Photoshop. I already have the image open, but you can just go to file new and then clipboard. And then you can just paste it in here. Now, first, I'm going to select the soccer player. And I'm going to do that by going to the object selection tool, which is here, object selection tool. If you don't see this, you might have to change it. So it could be that it's on quick selection tool or the magic wand tool. And then you need to click and hold your mouse down. Then we'll have the object selection tool. Now, as you can see, it will automatically select the soccer player, which is great. So we can just click it and then I'm going to right click on our layer. I'm going to duplicate it, press OK, and I'm going to mask this. And we can also double click on this text and call this soccer player. There we go. Hit enter. Now that's the first step, but now I also want the soccer player to be gone in this layer. So I'm just gonna hold command on Mac or control on Windows, make sure that this selection is selected again. And then I'm gonna go to select, modify, expand. And then 20 pixels should be enough, maybe even more. Basically what we want is that it will select a bit more. So there's a bit more room to play with. And then I'm just gonna press generate a fill. Don't have to type anything, just press generate. And then AI will do its work. Now, sometimes it can happen that it generates another person. That's something we don't want. In that case, you might need to expand the selection even more. Now, in our case, it didn't. It did generate a goal, which I don't like. Let's turn off our top layer so we can see what's happening here. As you can see, it generated a, a weird goal. So let's see the other ones. Those are actually, let's see. I think the last one is the best. Let's turn the player back on. Yes, that's amazing. So now we can just select these layers by holding shift and clicking, right click, and then I'm just gonna merge layers. And then I'm gonna call this background like that. Turn the background off. I can actually delete this by just hitting backspace. And this is perfect. We have the soccer player and we have the background. Now I can just save this as a PSD. So I can just go to file, save as, and then I can call this soccer player, player, save, press okay. And then we'll go to After Effects. So here in After Effects, I'm just gonna create a new composition and I'm gonna make it 4K, 25 frames per second. Press okay. Now we're gonna import our Photoshop file. Just make sure the import as is set to composition, retain layer sizes. Press okay and press okay. And there we go. We have a composition with two layers, which is great. You can actually animate in here if you want to, but in this case, I'm just gonna copy this over. So I'm just gonna select them all. I'm gonna go to the composition that I created and I'm gonna paste it. And as you can see, they're not the right size. So what I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna link the soccer player to the background and I'm gonna right click on the background, transform, fit to comp. It will automatically scale to the comp and the soccer player will also scale with it. The keyboard shortcut is Alt Command F, Alt Control F on Windows. Well, this is already cool, but we're gonna stylize it a bit. So I actually have some footage, the rain overlay, and some camera flashes. I'm gonna import these both. And if you want these, you can of course join the pro club. You will get the project file, or you can even join the light club where I always share the assets. Now this is great, but as you can see, they're not the right size. So I'm just gonna select them both. 
alt control f or alt command f on mac and it will scale it to the right size now go to toggle switches and change the blending mode to screen and this will make it transparent and that's great we can turn the audio off i don't need that and i'm gonna make sure the camera flashes are below our soccer player that will make it realistic and let's just see how the camera flashes pop up quite cool i think they're a bit too bright so i might just tune them down a bit by pressing t and changing the opacity a bit to maybe like 80 percent and i'm also gonna mask it because we don't want the flash to appear on the soccer field it's not realistic and also not on the stadium so i'm just gonna go to the pen tool and let's just draw a rough mask around where we want it so basically i just want it around here something around here basically just on the stadium right something like this just where the people are seated and then i am going to press f for feather and i'm going to feather it out so it's not cut off too harsh that's great the first one i don't really like so i'm also going to move this a bit so it's a bit more realistic perfect now i am happy with the rain the only thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to go to layer new adjustment layer and i'm going to add a tint to this so go to effects and presets double click on the tint and the black and white is actually also really cool but now we can just change the white to a color that we want in this case i'm gonna do it a bit like a light bluish something like this press ok and then you can just dial the amount of the tint or what we can also do is change the black so go into the map black too and changing that to a bluish color too maybe i'm gonna set it to like 70 percent and then we can also add a brightness and contrast to this and with this we can basically increase the brightness a bit as you can see and maybe also increasing the contrast a bit before after as you can see it will make it pop more that's really really cool now to animate this i'm just gonna go to the background press s for scale set a keyframe by clicking on the keyframe icon going to the end and then just scaling it a bit something like this so there's just a bit of movement and not only that i'm also going to press on the soccer player i'm going to go to the puppet position pin tool and this is one of my favorite tools and we can click on this and now we can just add some points where we want so for example i'm just going to add one point on the head and then maybe one point in the center and maybe two points at his legs so these are pinned down so basically when we move this Maybe I'm even gonna delete the one at the head and now we can just move him. So let's go a bit further. Let's move him a bit to the right. Let's go a bit further. Let's move him a bit to the left. And at the end, maybe to the right again. Let's see what this looks like. Make sure nothing is selected so we can see what's happening here. That's cool. But what I do want to do is make it a bit more smooth. As you can see, it's really static, almost like he hit someone and really robotic. Basically, what we can do is just open this mesh and open this deform. As you can see, now we can see our keyframes. These are the keyframes that we set. Now, an easier way to get to this, you can also just click on the layer, press U to see the keyframes. And then what we can do is just select all of these keyframes by just clicking on the position here and hitting F9 on your keyboard or right-clicking keyframe assistant, easy ease. And this will make it just a bit more smooth and just a bit more organic and natural, almost like he's really alive, right? And this will already add enough movement in my opinion. So that's cool. Now let's go to the next part and that's basically this line animation and of course also this really cool gear animation and this text animation. So first things first, I basically want a like dark overlay at the bottom. And in my opinion, the easiest way to do this is to just go to layer, new, solid, just creating a black solid. So changing the color of this, press OK. Then go to your shape tool here. Mine was set on star. So click on this and then hold your mouse down. I'm going to set it to the rectangle tool and then just draw basically a mask at the bottom, something like this. Make sure it's white on all sides and then press F for feather and then just feather this to 500. Maybe even thousands. Let's see. Yeah, that's perfect. So as you can see, it's a really subtle gradient, exactly what we want. Now, of course, we can fade this in by pressing T and setting a keyframe and then just dragging this out and let's set this to zero. And this will make sure that it will basically fade in softly, as you can see, 
It's really nice. Now let's add that cool glowing line. I'm just gonna create it by using the pen tool. So click on the pen tool, make sure the fill is set to none, press okay. Click on the stroke and set that to the solid color, okay. And change the stroke just to a color that you like. I'm gonna set it to light bluish, something like this, press okay. And now just click on the left, set a point, then hold shift and click on the right. And then we have a straight line. Now I do want to align this, so I'm just gonna click on the align tool and align it in the center. And it was actually quite centered already. I'm gonna increase the stroke to maybe eight pixels. That's cool. Now you want to add a glow to this, ideally a deep glow, but you can also use the normal glow. If you just go to the effects and presets and you add the normal glow to this, just increase the radius to something like 43%. Now change the glow colors to A and B colors, then set the A and B midpoint to 100% and change the color to a blue color, something like this, okay? And then I'm also gonna increase the glow intensity. First by a lot, so we can see what's happening here. You can see when we zoom in, it's quite harsh. So I'm just gonna increase the radius a bit, decreasing the glow intensity. That's already really nice. So glow radius around 100, glow intensity on like 7%. I'm also gonna add a Gaussian blur to this. So go to the effects presets, just add a Gaussian blur. Let's move this on top of it, just increase this by a bit. And this will also increase the glow, so we might have to decrease it a bit, but it will basically make this line a bit more soft. It's quite a cool effect, as you can see. Don't overdo this, maybe set this to like eight. And there we go, we have a really cool line. Maybe I'm gonna even go and set the glow intensity to like five, so it's a bit less harsh. That's really nice. I also I changed the composite original on top instead of behind. I also think that works a bit better. Just play around with this. Again, deep glow is a bit easier because you can just like dial in these settings. But since it's a paid, but since it's a, but this works too. So now we're gonna animate it. I'm just gonna open it and I'm gonna add a trim paths, open the trim paths, and I'm gonna set a keyframe for the start and end. And let's move this out to the right. And then I'm just gonna type in 50% and 50%. And this will make sure that it will basically animate from the center, as you can see. Now let's move these keyframes, select them all. Again, F9 or right click and then easy ease. I'm also gonna go to toggle switches, make sure motion blur is set to on. And then you can even select these and go into the graph editor and make them more smooth by dragging this out, for example, like this. And if we now play this, I'm just gonna set the quality a bit lower. As you can see, it's a really smooth animation. I really like that. Cool. Now let's go to the gear. I also have a gear icon here. You can just drop that in. It's really tiny, but it is a vector, meaning that we can infinitely scale it. And the easiest way to do this is to just right click on this icon after we imported it and go to create, create shapes from vector layer. We'll just create a vector shape. So we can now just delete this by pressing the backspace button. And we can scale this up by pressing S. Just gonna disable this graph editor for a bit and then scale this up. Here we go. And now we have our cool gear icon. And now I can change the fill to a fill that we want. We can also set it to like dark gray, or of course you can also go to T for transparency and making it a bit less bright. But to be honest, I think if we just set it to 100%, just make sure that the fill is set to like a darker color, it won't really be noticed that much. Set okay. Then click on the gear outlines again, and let's move this. That's cool. Now press R for rotation, and now I'm gonna show you a cool trick. We can just hold Alt, click on this stopwatch, and type in time, and then the asterisk, which is like times, 100. Then just click here on the background, make sure nothing is selected. And this will just make it rotate. As you can see, it will infinitely rotate, which is really cool. But what I do want to do is make it maybe a bit slower. So let's set this to 50. So it's a bit more smooth. It's a bit less distracting too. It's nice. Now to animate it in, I'm literally just gonna press P for position, set a keyframe, go a bit back. And let's move this to the left, hold shift, and then press T for transparency, setting a keyframe, dragging this out and setting this to zero. So this will basically make it fade in and move into the composition. It's cool. Now press U to see our keyframes. We can of course align them a bit better. And I'm also like always gonna easy ease this by hitting F9, 
and adding motion blur. And I'm also gonna click on this keyframe and go into the graph editor. I'm gonna make sure that this is really smooth. Let's drag this out. That's really nice. Maybe I'm even gonna move these keyframes a bit to the front. That's smooth, I like that. Now for the text and circle animation, I'm first gonna create these small tiny circles. And we can do that by just replicating this glow effect. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit. I'm gonna go to the ellipse tool by holding your mouse down on the rectangle tool. There we go. Then let's make sure that nothing is selected. And I'm just gonna draw a circle. Make sure you hold shift and also make sure the fill is set to none. There we go. So we have a tiny, tiny circle. Looks cool. And now we can just go to the shape, go into the effect controls and copy the settings. So just hold command or control on Windows, command C, control C on Windows, and then going here and then control V on Windows, command V on Mac. As you can see, it's a bit too much. Uh, we might have to change these settings a bit. So we're gonna first change the stroke to maybe four pixels. And I'm also gonna change the glow radius a bit. And I'm also gonna change the glow intensity. Maybe the glow intensity to one and then increasing the radius a bit, something like this, just so it's not too much. Let's change our quality to full to really see what's happening here. That already looks nice. You don't want to overdo it with your glows. It needs to be subtle. So now we're gonna add a trim paths to this. So just go to trim paths open the trim paths and animate and set a keyframe for the end. Let's go a bit more to the front, back in time, something like this. And let's set the end to zero. Now what I want to do basically, so it animates as you can see, quite cool. But of course I want to easy ease this like always. And I also want to enable motion blur. And let's go into the graph editor while these are still selected. And also make sure this is a bit more smooth at the end, not too much, something like that. And if we now play this, it will be really smooth. Oh, I like that, that's cool. Now for the text animation, it's actually quite cool because we see a couple of things. As you can see, it will drop down from the top to the bottom. It will also fade in and it will also have like a decoder effect. Now let's just go to the text tool first and type our text here. So type our text here. Let's change this to a thinner font by just selecting our text and making it maybe like regular something like that turn off the stroke and also turn off the all caps there we go and i'm also gonna change the size a bit to something like this change the alignment to the left and let's go to the selection tool and move this a bit cool now let's go to the effects and presets and we can literally just type in decoder and fade in so decoder fade in double click then press U to see the keyframes and let's and let's move this text layer a bit. As you can see, this keyframe is just starting here. It's not and never ending. So let's move this and let's move this layer a bit. Where is our keyframe? Move it again. Just gonna make sure that this is visible by dragging this. Let's move it again. Ah, there is our end keyframe. It always animates it so long. So now we can just finally change this. You can also, by the way, just disable the keyframing first and then just enabling it back again. So now it fades in and it decodes in. Now that's cool, but we also want it to move from the top to the bottom. So we can just reopen this text layer and then you see this animator one, right? So we can just go to add property and then position. So we will add this property and now we can set this second value to something like minus 60. We'll basically move the text up and it will animate it down as you can see and it will also decode it. Now that's really cool and for the other text animation it's literally just duplicating. So how to do that is to just of course select both layers by holding shift, pressing command D or control D on Windows, moving these layers to the top and then hold shift, drag this out there we go. Now, of course, you also want to adjust the timing a bit so we can literally just move these layers a bit to something like here. And basically once this one is done, then the next one starts. And then you get something like this. I think the end result looks really, really cool. And again, if you want to become a pro editor, want to earn two to 5K a month with editing, then do join my masterclass, the Social Creator Club Pro. Link is in the description. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Again, thanks for all the support. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and then I'll see you next time. Bye.